Hello, welcome back. Hope you're all well. Oh, well. see it, battery's charged. <laughs> um, just want to do a little video on my Grasshopper 2. So we'll have a quick look at this and a quick look around it. Yeah, let's have a look at it. I don't know if you heard that, the bells are ringing because it's a minute silent or something for the um, year of lockdown. Right, so this is my Grasshopper Mark II. Um, I bought this in around about 1991. I bought this when I uh, bought my house. And obviously we had, me and Heidi, had, we had a couple of spare balls, we didn't have kids then, so she had a couple of things and I had a Scar Electric 6R4 Metro one and I bought this as well remember when I was still I was still racing back then so um, um, I just wanted something to do for, for the winter so um, yeah so this is the, the Grasshopper I'll say Mark 2 um, all I've done to this apart from what I don't even know where you can see it but I was, um, all I've done to this is the front bumper's not on it no more because I did break the brackets by the looks of it. Um, but I never did like the bumper. It, it was in the way, always good call. So the bumper's gone um, and it's been fully um, ball raced. It's all metal bearings now. Uh, all the way through, including the front wheels because they've got the, the bearings in the front wheels. And it's got a 15 turn brush motor in it. You see there's a silver tin. Tin one, silver can. Um, yeah, and obviously I used all my all the electronic speed controllers and stuff. You see the original um, manual speed controllers. Right, we've whipped the body off. There's no radio gear in it at the moment or nothing like that. It's just how it's coming out of storage. And I believe this is one of the first ones I put away to be honest. So we'll whip the body off and have a, have a little look with dust. Long pins are handy for this. <laughs> there you go, the body's off. Which will body up filthy dirty, that's all the mud inside. It's absolutely filthy. One's a bloody good clean. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot in these. I don't know how we can see. There's not a lot in here, so obviously normally you'd have your um, manual speed control here and up here um, you'd have your um, condenser or, yeah it's condenser, that's what it's called you know what I mean, the little white thing with the silver bracket, it's really really hot <laughs> um, yeah, so that would go up there, so literally just ripped all that, that's the original uh, steering uh, servo yeah, that's all original. And the battery fits in the little tray in the, in the bottom. I'll have a look at that in a second. But um, one of the problems with this, having one of these, if you, you had one of these back in the day, when they stopped sort of making them, um, tyres were the problem. Because these originally back, these back tyres were originally spiked tyres. I've left, I've left this one loose. Um, but they were originally spiked tyres and when I went to get a set of these back in I guess early 2000s that's a dog wanting to go in um, yeah early 2000s they were charging something like £40 a pair um, for tyres and there's no way I'm going to pay £40 for tyres for these so I ended up having these on the back I'm not quite sure what these are off of these ones um, these ones I believe have a, or an RC10B4, could be an RC10B4 tool, four four. you know, you know the one I mean. Well, it's a real nice bit of kit by the way that is. Um, but the tyres were ideal um, for this. Plus they were a little bit bigger so they were, that's made them a little, a little bit more quicker. Um, 
Yeah, I'll show you the wheels in a second because they're a bit of, they're a bit of a funny wheel. They're not like an old Tamiya uh, with a square. They are um, four little pins. In fact, I'll whip one off and show you. Right, so that we can see it. There's four little pins in it. The trouble is with this, when you undo the you normally hold the wheel and undo it, as you pull it away, you lose the you know, the axle will start spinning. <laughs> um, and the motor's obviously not got a lot of turn against you know. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say is so it all turns. So um, yeah, you have to get your fingers around the back of the, the axle and um, hold it. So you can turn it oh, on, so move out the way you want to see it now. Yeah, so you get it on there like that, and because you're doing this, you think everything's sort of turning. So you've got, you've got no good holding the other wheel because it will just all turn, turn the motor. So um, yeah. So what I do with these is I just nip them on really, really tight. Originally I was going to put another pin through there and make a bracket up for another nut. But I will convert that to the square so we can use these ones. I'll probably use these front ones actually. Because they're nice and thin. And they fit on there a lot better, I think, somewhere like, like that. Could do it for the thicker ones. So it like. It does look too thin on the camera. Like that, they're not too bad, but it's the height of the fish on that one. Just that little bit, I don't think it really shows, does it? <laughs> it's just that little bit bigger. A few mil. Um, yeah, like I say, this is full, full ball raced all the way through. I know you get some front tyres for it, at least I can alter the wheels because. Um, these tires and that, and like I say, back when I looked, I was down to it. Didn't want that, I obviously at some point didn't want that kind of done, did I? But obviously, it's just like a stub axle with one of those half a field type tangle around that. Um, yeah. We were bearing ice, so as you can see, I put metal bearings in it, it's a plastic. And obviously I've got the gearbox, it's all fully ball raced and everything you can do for speed. Out of the poor little old thing. <laughs> but, oh, it's back on there. Yeah, I'll so just show you the tyres, the tyres look, actually. But they are the original, so they're what 30 years old. So you can't complain. And it's been left in sheds and stuff at times, you know, weathers and it's been out in all weathers, salt and, and roads have been icy and snowy and <laughs> yeah, I'd put it through hell. Um but but now you can get for these you can get all the upright suspension, you can get anti-roll bars. Um, but they're so expensive, they're so expensive, it's ridiculous, um, and they're not, the kit ain't worth it. I did think about making a few things myself, like a, um, you know, a post across, post across here, the uh, strap braces, um, because there's a bit of flex there, but then again that's what, that's what it is, and they're only like normal, um, you know, friction shocks, so they're not going to do anything. Um, not sure if these are uprated springs actually or they're standard thing about it because I did buy a set of uprated springs and I'm guessing these are the, yeah I would say these are uprated springs, heavier spring. Um, yeah I reckon they're heavier springs but they're not um, nothing special, we don't want too much because all it'll do is you know, bounce but the, the trouble with these are, I don't know how well you can see it, I'm going to sit back on that wheel so <laughs> There's a slot here, and what happens is you have a spring in there. These are knackered and fell out, but they don't really do anything anyway. Um, and so the actual does this, but the idea of that is to give it more travel. So obviously, when this lifts up, it can travel here. Just gives it a little bit more more lift. You see, you can see how much movement there is in that axle, can't you? Um, but that's why I put the anti. You can buy, I say now you can buy an anti-roll bar to fit on this. Um, but it is bloody expensive. 
Um, but the trouble is, the trouble when you put a lot of power through these, is you get the old axle tramp, where the axle sh bounces like this from side to side. Um, doesn't bother me. I'm used to it, and I think it does get grip eventually, you know. Um, things when it does get grip, it wheelies. And they, they do do a wheelie bar for them now as well. Basically, do everything whatever it's thought of over the years, of 30 years, well, over 30 years, because these have been made for a long time. We were made before I bought this, a long time before I bought this. Um, everything, all the problems have been sorted out now, so that you can buy the kits, but it's just so expensive, people want so much money for it. And like I so said, I don't think it's worth it. It's a cheap beginner's kit, and when the new one came out, they were saying about £60. For the new kit, and I thought that's that's still good value. Um, but I looked the other day, and I saw between 130 and yeah, 120 and 140 pound. And I thought, to me, to me personally, I thought that's a lot, a lot of money to um, for one of these. For what it is, you can buy some nice kits, but it will. It, it's what it is. I mean, ask me if another one cut at the right price, I'd, I'd I'd buy it just because I know I've had 30 years out of this one. And like I say, this has been abused, it's been up and down stairs, it's been... Uh, I can't think where it hasn't been. Um, it's been outside, I mean, even what I like, I don't think I like about these bodies. I mean, that's been on its roof more times than I can remember. <laughs> a lot more times. And there's not a mark on it, really. It's just, this is just dirt and crap stickers where the, 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 the sort of glue's gone off of them, you know. But um, that, that clean all up. So I'd like to restore this, that's one of my, one I'm going to restore. Um, but I'd say if I'm going to buy it, I might buy a set of wheels for the back of it and tyres, because I'll say they're now about £12, £14 now. Um, maybe I'll buy a set of tyres for the back for special occasions. <laughs> and use these, I've got stacks of these, these things. Um, you know, these I've got stacks of these to use on the back of them. Like lots so of main problems will be finding another front wheel with a bearing in it. Or if I, if I can't get these ones. But hopefully now like I say they've relaunched it, we can we can get all these bits. But that's basically it, like I say that's original original everything you see is original part of the motor what you can see. And obviously it's been bearing new bearings full out. Maybe the springs have been up Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And that's another thing, because they they're only friction, friction shops, they do get that with a stick like that. <laughs> yeah. They do do that with a stick. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure I can do something about that if, if it comes to it. But it does want a bloody good clean. Um, but I couldn't find this. When I was looking through the others, this is the one I couldn't find. And obviously this is... Quite, you know, for me, it's personal, it's you know, a lot of good times with it. But like I said, with that 15 turn motor in it, I know it's a brush motor and uh, running on 7.2 uh, volts, um, or even the 8.4 on the 7, you know, I can fit that in, I can fit that in here. I'll just show you the battery. I was going to show you the battery holder. That's the battery holder, just about. Yeah, so there's not a lot, you can't put a 7 cell in there, but you can, you can wedge it in, <laughs> you, know, you know, if you want to. Right, right, I hope you enjoyed the long-winded look at my <laughs> guys up on Mark II. Um, yeah, there's not a lot more I can say about one of these. Uh, be interesting to have a look at the, the new one, so that you know to compare it. But uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with these over the years, and I say it was cheap at the time. I think I paid about 40, 40 quid for that brand new, 45 pounds, something like that. But um, yeah, I think with all the, with all the gear, it's about 55 quid. You know, with the transfer and everything, the mini you can see behind, I've sort of broke the problem out with that. Or I think I have. Just reset the speed control. I didn't think until after I up uploaded the video. But hopefully that's all. I've only tried it up on the up on the bench, so I don't really know. Um, and in the next video, I'm going to get the RS4 Sport running. That's my my aim for that. 
and then uh, you can let me know which one you'd like to see being blasted down the road when it's nice weather. So, uh, <laughs> well, all three, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if you like this, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that a lot. If you didn't, then whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, you know, if you like, so if you like my videos, you know what to do. Anyway, take it easy, and remember it's okay not to be okay. See you soon. <laughs>